Now let's look at the types of errors that occur when working with hypothesis testing. So whenever we evaluate a hypothesis test, there's only two things that can happen. We're either going to decide that we reject H0, the null hypothesis, or we fail to reject H0. The thing to notice is that we never accept H0 because one sample is not enough to prove anything. One sample can lead us to believe that something's possible or there's no way it's true, but it never is enough to be like completely convinced. Can you hear this sound? If I tell you that sound is me clicking a pin, okay, there's no reason to reject my claim. You're not totally sure it's me clicking a pin. Maybe it's me turning on a light switch or something, but it sounds close enough that you're not gonna tell me I'm for sure wrong. But if I tell you that noise is me brushing a feather against my cheek, yeah, there's enough reason to reject that claim, even though it's only one sample. So you could reject, but you didn't believe or accept that it was a pen. You're not willing to bet your life or a million dollars that it was for sure a pen. And so there are four things that can happen when we go to reject or fail to reject H0. The first thing is we might reject H0 when it was false. And if we reject it when it was wrong, then we made a correct decision. But what if we reject it when it was true? You tell me there's no way I was clicking a pen, but I really was clicking a pen. Then we made an error, and it's referred to as a type one error, specifically represented by alpha, the alpha that we've been using for confidence intervals. So now instead, let's assume that we fail to reject H0 when it's true. So you don't tell me I was wrong, then, um, we made a correct decision, right? If I really was, I don't know how to say it with that one, but let's go about to fail to reject H0 when it was false. In that case, again, we've made another error. This time it's referred to as a type two error, and we use the Greek uppercase letter B referred to as beta, so it's a beta error. And so this is all kind of described down here in this lower left that, you know, if we reject H0, when it was false, then we made a correct decision, etc. So, for example, if H0 is true and we fail to reject it, we've done it right. And so our type 1 and type 2 errors are listed. People understand it a lot more if you think of the court system. So imagine you have an innocent person. If you convict them, you just made an error. If you acquit them, you made the correct decision. Or, for example, a guilty person, if they're convicted, that was the correct decision to make. Not that we really know if they were guilty or not, but if they were guilty and we acquit them and kind of let them go, then we've made an error, but it's not considered as serious an error as a type 1 error. Since type 1 is the worst type of error, we want to minimize the chance of it happening, so we make alpha as small as possible. It's considered worse to send an innocent person to jail than to let a guilty person go.